chat's popping off. The stream's popping off. The donos are popping off. The PayPal's popping off. The GoFundMe's popping off. And so you know what? We're going to see a best of three finals because nobody here wants this hype train to end. So we're going to keep this going. We're going to, we've alerted the teams. Uh, Cure Me and the Cuties versus the Willy Wanglers is going to be our final. It's going to be best of three. The healers are banned. Dan Zaburo is banned. I don't want to see any of these cheese level two ganks because we're going to see people diving deep into their god pools. Uh, but, but Bobby, I, uh, there's probably more to talk about in that game. I, and, uh, before we throw it, but, uh, what do you think, man? Are you excited for these finals? Yeah, I'm super excited for a best of three. I think, like, best of ones are sick. Like, they're really good games because you don't know exactly what's going to happen. But with best of threes, there's going to be, like, counter bans. We don't have to deal with healers because it's the finals, too. There's going to be, like, a meta that shapes up with a best of three, and you're going to see, like, different gods first pick. It's just a lot more exciting and just better than a best of one. Also, thank you guys so much for all the money you guys are donating today. That's literally why we're here today. Uh, the tournament is sick. Like we're celebrating the end of season seven, but at the end of the day, we are here to celebrate or to yeah, I mean, I guess celebrate like Raffer's career and just get help give back a little bit for him. So thank you guys so much for all the money you guys have donated. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, now, just on top picks. of that, we also had twenty gifted subs from the Mind Killer, uh, absolute legend, huge supporter of a lot of Smite streamers. Like I mentioned, you guys are amazing. That brings us to a total of two hundred and forty-four subs on the day, three thousand bits, and a hundred and two dollars. Uh, outside of the big donos uh, that we've kind of collected together, which brings us just about, uh, I think it's like uh, the mind killer just only those subs. So it's just about $725 just from subs and bits and donos um, outside of the big shots from uh, a first world and uh, glucose grandpa. So thank you guys so much. Um, I guess it's 1100 in donations. Plum grasper with a five gifted sub bomb right there. The lights have been going off like crazy. And then 20 from Little Hef as we get into the picks and bands. Bobby, take me through these uh, first round bands. Uh, there's going to be like a new thing that's popping up because healers are now banned. So now you're just going to be kind of focusing on just the strong overall gods and not as much as the cringe stuff like the healing. So now you see the set ban. He's just super strong, plays multiple roles. Cupid dominates the 2v2, good late game hunter. Persephone, so frustrating gob to play against. And you actually see the Cthulhu first pick, which is, I don't, I don't, we haven't seen Cthulhu today. We haven't even seen him banned, but just like at World, no, he kind of pops every game. up and dominates. He's been banned every game. He was first banned by uh, pretty much every team. I guess I haven't been paying enough, close enough attention. Well, Cthulhu. Thank you for joining us. It was uh, nice to have you here. I'm just glad I could be here. Uh, Scylla Sobek again, and uh, that team has just been prioritizing the Scylla Sobek combo, I think, right? Kakolin too, the same exact draft order as last time. Uh, Morgan pick on the other side. Kakulin actually plays really well into Morgan. It's so hard for the Morgan to try to invis and get away from this Kakulin because of all his giant area damage, giant AOE, just constant tick damage. So Morgan has a hard time playing into it. I wonder how Morgan will try to alleviate that pressure and that dive from the Kakulin. And then this rat pick, he's kind of like a, a weird god. You'll see him in solo, you'll see him in jungle, and he plays completely different in both roles. Plays a, a backline dive kind of pseudo healer pseudo health self healer or just a quick burst global half global jungler that just ganks off cooldown and just is impossible to fight early um really just clean drafts early from both these teams uh the picks and ban the ban phase for phase two is starting now and looking at a cabracken ban just going to be banning out i guess it would be a jungle cabracken that they're worried about our solo cabracken or Support be, it would have to be support Kibraken, yeah, right? Support you're the, and Kuzumbo you're too. Must have seen something in a previous game from Kirmi and the Cuties or know the support to make those bans. And then you see Susano on the other side. And maybe another jungler ban taken down here. Hunbot, something like that. You see the Robin. And after Calypso's Penta, it makes sense. I don't think there's any way they give him the Robin. I don't think we'll see a Calypso Robin unless it's early picked for the rest of the, uh, the rest of the tourney. These are interesting jungler targeted bands here. I'm not sure who the Willy Wangler. Oh, I think it's Poncho. Uh, you know what? Knowing Poncho here, he's got a pocket pick that I think he's going to turn to, and that's the Pele. I think we see a Pele out of the Willy Wanglers. Uh, Poncho is a big Pele fan. He and I go back and forth about which one of us is a better Pele constantly. It's obviously me, but uh, his is pretty good too. Uh, 
Well, I, you know, I can see, right? You, you, you can see? Yeah. No, you. I saw that eye roll. That was a good. All right. I was completely oh, yeah. wrong. It's the best that um, I. Uh, well, okay. But uh, I, yeah, no. I this think is the, a, the is a weird pretty team comp. <laughs> I, I agree. It's a pretty good team comp. The Bassett is just a really good pick in the Morgan because Morgan also has a, a problem getting away with Bassett from Bassett because of all those ticks. Bassett will have a little bit of trouble in the early game trying to just avoid this rat and just get away from this rat. But if she can get to that mid game, unreal plays are going to be coming out from this Bassett. She's going to have a lot of damage. It's hard for the rest of the team to get away from her. I don't think she plays that well into Cthulhu. Cthulhu really isn't going to take that much damage. She's just trying to burst down Squishy. So we're just going to see this Bastet power form, maybe try to gank mid a couple times. And yeah, the, I think the Willy Wanglers are just mostly going to be playing for the late game, but they have a nice touch of early game too. And Little Half with another 20 gifted subs. Let's go. Some hype in the chat. Thank you so much, Little Half. You're a beast, man. And speaking of beastly team comps, those 16 numbers... On the credit card, Sebastian with 150 British pounds donated through PayPal directly to Raffer. If you guys are looking for a way to get those donos out there, exclamation point Raffer, the links are in the chat. 150 British pounds for Sebastian and then 50 from Christopher. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Uh, we are we are plugging along and we are absolutely compensating for... Uh, not everything, obviously. Actually, probably not even close, but we're doing what we can to help out Raph and Tig, and I, I would say I'm pretty proud of the job we've done so far. But we got a best of three finals. The night's not over. The donos are not over. The games are not over. And we're going to get into game one here. Are you guys ready? Uh, before he sends it over officially, the GoFundMe got a couple of them. $20 from Anonymous, $17 from Garrett, $100 from... Mish, Jiggy, Bezel, Ha. Oh, that's Happy Hour Arcade. Happy Hour Arcade is also sponsoring one of the giveaways today. They're amazing. And then we got a I different Garrett guys. for another 20 also. Thank you guys so much for the money. Again, thank you guys so much. We're just here for Raffer and Tiggy. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Let's get into the game. Let's see the, if the Willy Wanger, Wanglers can take it to Kermie and the Cuties. I don't know how the casters do this, but I don't envy them at all. Uh, look, I don't even know how we do it either. When you get names like the Willy Wanglers on here, I know I'm going to at least say Willy Wonkas one time during this cast. I already call it here, Fuzzy. But oh, Jeremy yeah. and the Cuties coming in after a hot win in the last one. Calypso with the big pentakill on the Rava. Now going to the Ratatoskr this time because it was banned away from him. And an Athena pick here from Oh No My Eggs. We don't see Athena very often. No, and I really like the Athena pickup. It's definitely going to make sure that Oh No My Eggs gets around the map efficiently. You've got that Cthulhu who is able to be seen almost across the entire map of Season 7. But with Oh No My Eggs being able to just go from, hey, my Ratatasker is going into a fight that he might not look too great in, so those damage mitigations are really going to help. So Oh No My Eggs might look to kind of team up with Calypso on this Ratatasker just to make sure that he stays alive and he can be aggressive as he wanted to be because he got that Pinta kill because he was aggressive. So, oh no, my eggs is definitely going to try to help out his jungler. But I believe that when, when Inbound was talking about it, this fight will play for this mid lane. I think this Bastet trying to go onto the Morgan is definitely the play. And if we can see, you know, uh, Red Buff Bandit try to make sure that he gets on that Morgan, it's going to be great. But we also have to keep a lookout for Sobek as well. He can pluck people out and Spirited Book is one of those players that can do exactly that. Yeah, I mean, it's just what you're going to see every time out of a Sobek. Going to get that Galar Horn to get a little bit of slow, a little bit of damage onto him, and that nice little knock-up on Oh No My Eggs as well. And this is the level of aggression I'm expecting out of the Willy Wanglers every single time that they want this. This level, this duo lane has been kind of the name of the game where we've seen so much of the action. I'm honestly surprised we haven't seen a rotation from Calypso just yet. Instead, he's going for the Oracle Harpies for the time being. But he's got Blink available. He can easily make <clears throat> a rotation over into this left side. Well, I think what happened is Wraithen said that Calypso's pentakill didn't count because he made a cheeky level two rotation. Okay, so he's okay. trying to prove that he can still get a pentakill okay. without making that rotation. So Wraithen, you scared him off a little bit, but that's okay. I, I really think Calypso can run this game. He ran, you know, the last game that we watched, and I think he's going to be able to do the same thing again with a little help of Oh No My Eggs. But you can't, you know, keep out Cure Me. Jimmy was able to just make sure he was maintaining in the fights, and just because he was an ADC and he was that Rama, doesn't matter how many kills were against him, doesn't matter how many kills he got, 
once he hit level 20, an ADC is an ADC. They're going to be able to shred towers, they're going to be able to shred phoenixes, and they're going to be able to team fight efficiently. And that's exactly what they wanted to do. But now Spirited Book got oh. caught out because he got the block off. EI Jutsu onto Spirited Book. A good aggressive play from Kirmiat to kind of match the aggression of Spirited Book on this subbing. And that's kind of the punishment that you need to see. If only I know my eggs should have gotten there a little bit sooner, could have gotten a nice taunt off, maybe. But he'll try and go for the kill onto it. But I mean, when when support goes in for a pluck onto support and you have a hunter that can just gun them right after, I mean, that's the kind of play you got to see. And that's exactly what we saw. We saw him try to gun after it, but as you said, Ono Mike's not quite ready enough for that taunt yet to make sure that the damage can secure. But what we do see over on the right-hand side is just making sure that there's a boxing potential. And I really think this matchup favors the Kukulman for obvious reasons, but I think Cthulhu can definitely make sure those rotations come around. And once we see wh whoever solo lane starts rotating the first, I think that's going to determine who wins these team fights. And in my eyes, I'm looking at the blue team and I go, they've got a pretty strong team fight, not only with Calypso and Chevy, but with Ono oh My Eggs with that taunt and the fact that Vicemar can just turn into whoever he wants and turn into a Silo, for instance, and hit some big Ima monsters. And so we see that this time around, Poncho has picked up the Scylla for his team, where last game, Bikmar picked it up for their squad. So we're going to see how they can handle going against the Scylla. They think that the Morrigan is their answer to it. The Morrigan is an answer to a lot of questions. You know, how good is Morrigan a good god? Yes. Who's a good mid laner? Morrigan. I mean, it's just what you go with it. Morrigan, I want to say Morrigan is multi role, but more than traditionally, we see her into the mid lane for a while. We saw her solo, we've seen her jungle, we've seen her ADC. But finally, we kind of round it out, and I think people have realized that Morgan kind of just belongs in this mid lane, I feel. Yeah, and just because you, how much pressure you get on the map from the mid lane. Once that first tower inevitably falls, whichever side gets it, those that's the side that's able to push around these gold furies, possibly early pyromancers. Now, granted, it could turn the other way depending on if one team is team fighting extremely well. We've seen that throughout the entire tournament, that if you team fight well, you can just take whatever objective you want, but whoever gets the pressure in the early game is the one that usually wins that Gold Fury and Pyromancer, and that's really what they're wanting. Looks like we have another giveaway in the chat. Tiggy is the key word for it. You gotta be following for it. Uh, I'm looking on it. My production's saying it's Raffer, but you gotta be following Raffer and Tiggy. Keyword from the Godfather Plays game says, Tiggy in the chat. For a chance at a giveaway, there might be a rapper one going on as well at the same time. It's hard to keep track. Just throw them both in the chat at this point for your chance to win on to it. I mean, those are the two big keywords for the night on to it. So I, at this point, I can't even honestly tell you which one is the real keyword. Yeah, because both of these people are exactly who we're trying to support right now. We are trying to support Tiggy and Raffer through this incredibly painful process of having to replace everything that they own. And as Ray said, 10,000 pounds is not enough to even scratch the surface. We do know that the Smite community has come out in full swing numerous times for this. And we already see that coming into flourishing. So please keep it coming. Keep GoFundMe alive. Make sure that you guys send in the GoFundMe and the PayPals. As you can see, Raffer sending a screenshots to Wraith and every time he gets a donation, so please keep on coming because this is exactly what the Smite community is all about. This is what I love to see. Somebody beating up on a Cthulhu. Please take him down. Unfortunately for him, he's got an ultimate in an Athena ult. Let's back him up on that side. Taunt a little early from Oh No My Eggs. That's going to be a that, That's going to be Hermes allowed to live for the time being unless he goes in aggressively. Calypso is on the rotation too. They're going to clean up one and he'll drop down and stand into the soul and right on top of the Bandit and take them down for two kills on the four. Hear me in the cutie strike first. Bikmar turning into the Ratatasker from the Fire Giant pit, and I thought that was Calypso. He lands onto the solo laner. Then Calypso said, oh, hey, you guys got Herms? That's easy. I'll take care of Red Bandit and uh, the Red Buff Bandit. And Red Buff Bandit gets absolutely demolished by Calypso. So the double Ratatasker coming from this blue, come from Kirmi and the Cuties, and that was a cutie play, if I have to say so myself, J-Mac. I mean, when you have a Morgan and a Ratatoskr, it's going to be hard to really keep track, especially when they're both ulting at the same time, going to the same location. <sighs> Just two different targets onto that one. Great target selection by both players in order to make sure they secure the kill onto the solo laner and the other one to hold off the jungler and make sure to keep them at bay as well onto it. Guys, you can see onto there on the bottom, our GoFundMe goal is still on the way. 2,900 pounds so far out of the $10,000 goal that we're aiming to help send to to rapper and to give that's not the only ones we've received there's also been the mass amount of paypal donations that have gone their way whatever way you can support whether it's to go for me whether it's paypal whether it's five dollars or fifty dollars send anything that you can if you're able to to help these guys out 
Yeah, and even if you can't give money, we understand that times are hard right now due to COVID. So if you can't give money, just shout out the stream. Shout out Wraith and try to get some all your friends to come in and watch and just be a part of this amazing community. All we're trying to do is help out our community members and our community really got hit by this because of this and we all have seen rapper play we all have seen tigris streams there's so much fun to watch and we want to make sure that they're supported because this is their main source of income so please keep it coming we know that you guys are awesome and we we've already seen it through and through throughout tonight i mean the smite community is unbelievable <clears throat> over the course of the last i don't know like eight years that i've been here th this community has gone above and beyond for every cause that they've raised money towards whether it be for Raffer and Tiggy or any of the charity donation streams that have come through for all the different orgs. It doesn't matter if it's a single person putting up a charity stream or a fundraiser stream or an org that's putting up or high itself. You guys have always gone above and beyond. And now it's time to try and support one of our longest standing players in the history of this game with anything that you can. But back into the game, and we've been we've been we've been warm and fuzzy, you know, all heartfelt about this one. But right back into the action it goes. Calypso gonna get thrown back into the hands of Hermes. It's a 2v3 around the mid, or now it's a 3v1, unfortunately. He's left his support out to dry, stops one dash, but he's gonna be able to get away from that one. Uh, down from the sky, drops Calypso, unable to get the kill onto Poncho, but unfortunately for him, Big Mar still lurking around. And the support from the solo laner as Chevy has made the rotation in. But well, unfortunately for them, Red Buff Bandit, we get one kill. Still in that Cthulhu transformation. Waiting for their chance to get away, but he's gonna get blocked right back into the midst of it. Has enough for death. And will he have enough to get away? No, Red Buff Bandit. Gonna be able to turn around and get the kill. Might be able to keep Spirit Book alive just for a bit, but reaches off the mark. Hermes able to get one. They might turn around. Spirit Book lives. Oh my, no, my eggs. Oh no, my health bar as he falls down fantastic play from the willy wanglers that was just textbook the fact that they were able to not only get bikmar the first target was calypso they were able to get him the second target was the soul lander they were able to get him then bikmar was immediately followed right before that before chevy fell then we saw oh no my eggs just fall because of that and it all was because of sobek spirited book was able to keep everybody knocked up keep everybody from casting abilities and he was able to get a pluck off right before he had 15 HP when he backed away. He was able to pop a shell for his team so they can continue to dive while he left. Great play by Spirited Book to set up the team, and that was a huge win for the Willy Wanglers. I mean, as soon as Hermes made the rotation, Calypso, he peaced out. He's like, okay, I'm done with this fight. We can't keep this one going. Leaves Ono My Eggs all alone into that lane. So Ono My Eggs has to run away. Okay, now he can't do anything. Okay, well, now you've left the rest of your team. Uh, to be separated. I mean, the amount of separation that the Willy Wangler is able to put out here on the Kirmi and the Cuties is just unbelievable with just the slightest little rotations. And this is exactly what the Willy Wanglers wanted to do. They're trying to make sure that they can they have, like like Bobby said, they have an early game with the Red Buff Bandit, who's now got two kills and has been a part of every single kill that this team has had. Then they have the late game with the Scylla. They also have the mid game with not only the Heimdall, who is one of the better mid to late game hunters, but they have Hermes, who's piloting this Kukulin, who could just run maps. It just seems like that this team is well balanced all around. And as long as they can keep this pressure alive, we could see the Willy Wanglers pull out an easy win oh calypso just gets flung to his death that's the combo that sobek Scylla has and then you have a, a, a fast death there on the backside just to throw even more damage why not i mean you get plucked one time without beads without an immediate means of cc immunity to get away from it afterwards you're just spelling your own death at that point chevy forced to use the descent into madness because because of the pressure coming out from the willy wanglers and I'm surprised that the Willy Wanglers didn't go straight for that Pyromancer. There were three around. It's a Scylla, Bastet, and a Sobek, so they possibly could have done it. But instead, they're electing to evade the speed buff, which is going to absolutely hinder Calypso for not only the rotation, but just making sure that he stays alive. But Calypso now is able to go back, but a big guy, a monster's going to come out. It's going to be about half their health bar, but oh no, my eggs able to get away from the time. Calypso and Big Mar looking to dive down. Buff Bandit will fall and knock up on a Spirit Book and the dunk down from Eggs. He drives into the back line. Spirit Book forced to use that lurking in the water. The shield wall holds up from Spirit Book. Good, but not good enough. Get the damage. But more unfortunately for them, Big Mar will have enough to take them down. Still chasing through. Hermes is just slapping Eggs for minuscule damage at this point. They're able to pick out two in the midst of the fight. And Shell was used for both squads during that fight. And so that's going to be big for the boys and Kirmi and the Cuties. And that's what they want to do, just keep the pressure alive. They're trying to just maintain the bleeding. You take a look at the gold lead, it's 
negligible. There is none. You take a look at the kill lead. There is none. It's negligible. We're 12 minutes into this game. And it is an absolute close match between the two teams. And it really, it depends on who controls the objectives and who controls this jungle. And right now, in my mind, this goes to William the Wanglers just because of how Hermes is rotating. I mean, Hermes has not left this mid lane since the last fight. He's been sticking around here and he's going to get a double kill for it. We're sticking around. And look, he might be able to get another because Spirit of Book is back here. He can go for a Plunk if he wants to, but after the Myers drop down, they're going to think twice of it. I mean, Hermes has not left the mid lane for a solid minute and a half because of it. He's able to set up his team now for a possible Gold Fury. No response yet from Kirmi and the Cuties. They're not even going to be able to get to this Gold Fury in time. And that's because Red Buff Fan is keeping them busy in the mid lane or root onto the jungler, and that'll secure the Gold Fury for them. And that's exactly what Willy and the, the Willy Wanglers wanted to do. They wanted to make sure that the jungler was able to push up the mid lane, try to get as much pressure in that mid tower, because if that mid tower falls, like we said earlier, you open up the entire map. Because of how much pressure they had in that mid lane, they were able to easily get that gold fear on the left-hand side. Now they can look for this Pyromancer and even push this lead further. So the fact that, you know, even though Her Hermes is running around, and even though this Cthulhu Chevy is running around, the Herm uh, Chevy can't do anything because of how effective Hermes is on this Kakolin. So making sure that he stays out of these team fights. I mean, look at look at the health. Ratatasca was just one v one ing and there was no damage done to Hermes. I mean, look at what he's built. Tank boots, Stone of Gaia, Sledge. How, who's killing this man? Who? Uh, right now, all you can hope and pray for is that Kirmi starts getting online pretty quickly. He is going into that Berserker Shield uh, attack speed boots combo. Just give him a little bit more tank to steep around in this uh, and keep around in the game. And that's also going to keep him around in the laning phase. But right now, level 14, you want to make sure that your boy starts rotating early. But look at this. Uh, uh, <laughs> Kirmi able to pick up the kill with the help of Oh No My Eggs. Uh, look at what? I'm looking at a dead body on the floor. So I'm looking at That's the power that this Athena ult has. The damage mitigation plus the damage from the dunk afterward is just too much for a Sherpa to handle. Sherpa will fall down. I'm a monster. Nowhere near on the mark for it. And that's going to be a retreat from Big Mar. As, as, assuming he can even get out. Aegis is delayed a little bit longer. At least taken out by Spirit Book. Up into the descent into madness. Is Chevy looking for a kill? Trying to chase him down, but he can't close the gap. And now he's the one falling because he's got large poncho chasing him down along with Hermes. They're able to clean it up and get two kills. Again, another win for the Willy Wanglers. They're able to make sure that Kirin and the Cuties keep pushing up and keep being affected. Oh no, my eggs had no ult to be able to get to his team. So that was a great fight because there is nothing to do on the left-hand side of the map. And there's everything in the world on the right-hand side of the map. Great play by them. And now the Willy Wanglers are able to get Calypso because his ultimate is down. So I think he's able to get away, but a Aww. great stun with the acorns to keep him, keep him alive. That acorn blast sa saved his life for a <laughs> moment. For, for a moment. We have to we have to reiterate that uh, onto that. It's only for a moment. He thought he got out of there, but Buff Bandit had something else to say about it alongside his mid laner too. Extra large Poncho coming big. Oh, one and four. Don't let those numbers surprise you because Poncho has been putting up some big numbers in damage these game, this game. Cho is absolutely crazy in the damage. If we could take a look at the damage charts, you'll see that he's been a part of a lot of these fights. In fact, 40% of them. So as you can see, he's in the middle portion of that. And when a Scylla's in the middle portion, you might think, uh, it's just the middle, it's nothing to think about. But the fact that Scylla is a late game god and can do crazy insane damage in the early game, or in the late game, it just becomes an unstoppable monster when she hits level 20. The closer she is now, the better, more damage she's gonna be able to throw off. She's level 15 at 16 minutes in the game. I'm a little scared uh -oh. if I'm the Kirmi and the Cuties. Uh oh, Calypso looking for a kill possibly on the <laughs> back end side, but the only thing he's looking at is a Scylla killing him. Uh, Pancho just turned that around instantly. Uh, I'm sorry, Big Mar is gonna have to think twice about that one. And Calypso is not the one who made the dive in there. Big Mar kind of gets a taste of some medicine on that dive there. And now Calypso, get, looking over here, he, yeah, look, did you not just see what happened to your friend? I don't think you want to make that same mistake. Not only was it your friend, it was your build that happened with that. So Pickmar was able to say, hey, don't 1v1 the Scylla, she can kind of win. An extra large poncho is showing that he has an extra large brain in the play, not even wasting his beads to stop the knockup from Bikmar. So that was a huge win for the boys of red. The Willy Wanklers, 
They they are just running this map, and that's exactly what this team comp allows them to do. Kakolin, like we said, able to be just in that front line. Spirited Book has been great at peeling people. He's not using the pluck as a, as aggressively as most of the player does. He's trying to find the picks off just when someone is just out of position enough, and then the rest of the team is able to follow up with the damage. Great plays from both the tanks. And holding the minions, good support. Nobody ever holds the minions for the support player, but the support will always try and hold them for the mid laners and the carries. Just remember that the next time that your support is under farm and you're wondering why, oh, maybe I should have held those minions for him like he does for me every single time around. Kier me and the cutie's pushing up for uh, trying to get ready for this gold. Oh, what? What? I have to say, I feel like okay. you, 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 you had a little bit of a, a personal attack against that, but Bikmar had to turn into the Ratatasker to get away, and there's a fight over on the left hand side too, and that's going to be Kier me picking that up. And, but I just, I just felt the pain that you were experiencing, J-Mac, with that. Are you okay? Do we need to talk about this? Support mains rise up. That's all I gotta say to that. <laughs> I mean, that's all you save need to say. That's all you need to say. Just save the minions for your support. I I instead of throw a coin to your Witcher, save some minions for your support, okay? <laughs> save some minions for your support. Oh, uh, they don't need it. They've got Guardian's Blessing that gives them four gold a second. They've, uh, they've got, you've got your Gauntlet of Thieves that gets you tank, and you can build some damage oh, and cool God. down. <laughs> Look, ADC mains rise up. Forget your support. Oh, You're the one okay. that wants to get to level oh, 20 first. Okay. okay, now hold on a sec. <laughs> ADC mains rise up. We wait till level 20, and we do the same thing as every other one of them. We sit there and we hold W and left click. And we just hope and pray to R and Jesus we get that crit. Now stop with that ADC mains rise up. Hey, hey, hey! Left here. click, left click, go burr. All right, that's all I gotta yeah, say. Yeah, left yeah, click yeah. goes burr. Yeah, left click. Oh man, look at me on ADC. I'm hitting left click. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I feel like JBack Chat has gone through some rough times with ADCs. And if you agree, just, just say, I just say, I just. Support mains in the chat, rise up. Give give support to your boy, J-Mac, who is also a support main. Kier me and the cutie setting up for this fury over on the left-hand side, just trying to make sure they have the, you know, the, the vision advantage onto it. Working for Hermes, he's kind of in the middle of five, and uh, he's not looking too hot here. He's going to pop the thorns, but I think a little bit too late in the midst of the fight. Up onto one tree goes one, dropping right down on top of his Calypso. But Hermes is still alive. Nobody's taking him down just yet. Descent to the Madness now to try and take down the Soul later. But he's chasing down the wrong target. Hermes is going to be able to get away. Now Big Bar's looking for a target to the back. But who is he going to dunk down? And right in the middle of two of them. Calypso is able to pick up one. Big Bar, however, will fall to XLR Poncho, making it now a 4v4 fight. Ultimate advantage, however, is still in favor of the Willow Wangler because they've got two of them versus just the one out of oh no my eggs they're gonna have to go on retreat because their solo laner is getting low while the rest of the willy wanglers are starting to make their rotation around Pluck in by spirit of book and that's just an immediately dead cthulhu spirit of book might be losing his life for it up into the lurking in the water he'll go and he's still alive at the time hermes is still pushing into the front line sick i'm gonna miss i'm a monster gonna do some damage as well as the lash out of buff bandit to put some extra damage through but Kirmi is just firing those autos out and we'll be able to trade out a kill. Looking for another one will be extra large punch as he picks him up with the crush. Calypso grabs one, but Kirmi is dying slowly to that bleed. Kirmi gonna throw down the damage, but it's not gonna be enough to save his life. Buff Bandit, I'm a monster hey. over the wall. Unbelievable. That team fight was so long that I'm a monster was down at the start of it. It came back up and it, just incredible play. Spirited Book, like I said, he is just waiting for the person to get out of position. He is able to help with two kills. Almost a third one before he gave up his own life to save his squad. And that was just because he said, hey guys, I know I have 20 HP, but I could stay alive just a little bit longer and help that out. And that's exactly what he was able to do. Then on top of that, just the amount of damage that Red Buff Bandit's able to do and the extra large poncho, making sure that that burst damage comes out, just Absolute insane team play from the Willy Wanglers and Kirmi and the Cuties, they have to come up with a response soon because now Extra Large Poncho is Extra Large himself. 21 minutes in the game, tw level 20. Extra Large Willy is more like it onto this one. This man is yeah, absolutely. Around. 5 1 and 5 on the Scylla. A blind ult over the wall did over half of their health and took them down. This Scylla is just. Diff at this point. Scylla diff is really the only way that you can say it. Not even a mid diff. It's just Scylla diff at this point.
It's crazy to think that it's just not only Scylla Diff, but it's also the solo lane. Her Hermes has been low three times I have counted in these team fights and is able to escape with his life every single time. Spirited Book was twice, then he was able to escape, but he elected to go back in for the betterment of his team. So it just seems like the Kiri and the Cuties can't quite find that damage to secure those kills and just need a little bit more commu communication with that. Spirit Book gonna throw Chevy right into the back in the middle of all of them. Drops the Meyer down, but Chevy's not gonna be able to get any real benefit from that. Hermes gets the transformation into the Rage Worm. He's gonna dive right on top of Big Bar with it. Big Bar doesn't have the defense to get away. He can't even stealth out because he's gonna have his wounds be broken by the dot that comes out of this solo laner. Gets the transformation off just barely in time thanks to the help of Egg's ultimate, able to give him the protections needed. Put a Sikkim into the back. Dash away as far as he can go, but oh no, my eggs has no health left. I'm a monster, gets one. That gives him the reset to go on to Chevy. Gets thrown out of the crush, but it doesn't matter. They're able to take down three. Jeremy's still alive. Big Mar had to go back to base, and all five still alive and healthy for the Wanglers. And that, again, was just because of how much tanky these tanks are for the Willy Wanglers. Able to stay alive with a 4v2 just long enough for the damage dealers for the Willy Wanglers to come in and blow them up. Exactly the type of play that you want when you're a soul laner and you support. Now they get this free fire giant, and they're able to back, reset, and probably even look to push down this left-hand side because that's the next tower that's tier 1 that they can push down. And because they have this fire giant and pyromancer, there's nothing left for them to get. So why not push this left-hand side? down to open up the entire map. All right, so game number two, when it inevitably comes, doesn't even matter which team wins or loses this one. Scylla has got to be banned. Like, I, we have a global ban on healers for anybody just tuning in. It's a global ban on healers. So, you know, the primary healer gods are banned away. I think Scylla deserves a spot in this automatic ban just from the players. Obviously, we're not going to global ban Scylla, but somebody needs to put the ban on this god because she's disgusting. I guarantee you, Kiri and the Cuties are already thinking that. This Scylla, Extra Large Poncho, has been absolutely unstoppable. But what's also really helped, you have to think about it, silently in the corner, we talked about him for a little bit, the Red Buff Bandit. He has the exact same number of kills, and he's been a part of one more kill for this entire squad. It just seems like the mid-jungle combo for this team is so good that you have to see if you can find him and see if they can sneak out, and it looks like he's going to be able to fall. Not sure what you were doing there, Buff Bandit, all alone. The rest of the team wasn't anywhere near you. Hermes got a chop down into the middle of three. This guy is standing in the middle of three, dealing half of it. Uh, he carries the health and damage. Kimri's already under half. Descent into Madness out of the solo later, chasing him down. Big Bar is able to get one get more kill on it, makes it a two for none so far. Hermes able to pick up at one, make it a two for one trade out at least. And Chevy is getting low, might be falling down here. The carry has rotated over from Willy Wangler. He's going to get thrown against the wall. Is oh no, my eggs. And Sherpa is going to be able to get one kill for them. Hermes is still fighting in the midst. Hermes has done all of Jeremy's health bar and make it a triple kill to boot for Sherpa. And they're able to get a DS side and take down that tier two tower. And now they can look to get this mid Phoenix and they could possibly look to end the game. No one's going to be around for the next 20 seconds. So if they have these minions push up, this could be the end of game one. And this is what the Willy Wanglers want. So they're going to see if they're going to go for the call. And they are. Two towers still up and the Willy Wanglers are trying to beat the time. This is risky. Two towers, two Phoenixes. That's a healthy Titan. Minions are about to show up, though. It's down to half. Two of those minions get through. This might as well be clear as cut as the end beef. Calypso's going to try and disrupt them, but Great Pluck is going to push them away. Titan's still getting low, and there's just no one to stop that, ca that carry on the backside. Titan falls 25, almost 26 minutes in. Game two will be underway soon, but uh, fuzzy. What a game one fantastic game one from Willie and the Wanglers. And even Cure Me and the Cuties, too. They had some great plays as well with that double Ratatasker ult on the solo lane side to start setting up these kills. But unfortunately, I really think this goes to Hermes and Spirited Book, the two tanks for the boys and Willie and the Wanglers. They seem to just run this map. Whoever was out of position was immediately stunned, plucked, or just dead. One of the three. And Hermes, I think, is my MVP for this game just because of the fact that he was able to 3v1 half health the entire carry squad for Kirmi and the cuties. I mean, he dealt half of Kirmi's health in the middle of a 3v1, left, Kirmi healed up, lost that half again, and Hermes shot back up and said, oh, hey, I'm back for the other half that I didn't take earlier and just <laughs> wiped him out. I mean, Hermes is unstoppable in this one. Poncho with some disgusting damage on to him. We're going to take it to a break. When we come back, we'll throw it back over to raise an inbound to break down the rest of the